Hi, welcome to the Interaxis channel and Interaxis.io. We're going to keep talking about governance within the building blocks section. Again, this is our third on governance, so if you haven't watched the other two, go back and watch those. And remember, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe because we keep coming out with videos like this where we want to talk about things like the building blocks and the important parts of decentralized finance and crypto and some of the news that's happening. So please go ahead and subscribe so that you can get the most up-to-date videos and the most up-to-date content. So moving on to governance, and this time we're going to talk about governance tokens. This has obviously been super hot in the world of decentralized finance. These tokens that, that are enabled on, uh, on top of different protocols that enable us, enable those that are the holders of the token to actually govern the protocol. So uh, a little bit, and I'm not going to go su uh, too far into the details about how they work, how you, you get them, but I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, kind of what they do and what the idea is here. So um, some of the governance tokens that were out at some point uh, earlier on are like uh, synthetics is a governance token. So if I buy the SNX token, um, I can, uh, one, I can lock it up, kind of stake it, participate in the, um, in the growth or in the fees of the protocol. So I lock it up in this synthetics uh, protocol and any fees that are generated there on the exchange, some of them are passed through to those who locked up their tokens. Now of course they've been issuing more SNX to those that lock up so you also get another type of reward. But the idea is here you get rewards plus you get some level of governance. And the governance means that if I have these tokens technically I get to help vote on the forward progress of the protocol. Um, and that, and we're going to talk in just a moment about why that is so important. So another one, uh, of course, that's happened recently is the Maker token. So this is where we talk about Maker, uh, Maker DAO. Uh, we just talked about DAOs uh, in the previous video. So the Maker DAO is what issues die. And especially uh, several months ago, back in March of, of 2020, when the value uh, of DAI changed significantly by virtue of the fact that um, ETH and, and all cryptocurrencies just took a dive for, uh, in a very short amount of time, liquidated a bunch of vaults. And um, so the dollar peg, the fact that DAI is usually right around a dollar, changed significantly. And so the, the MakerDAO had to uh, enact more governance. So more of those maker token holders had to get involved and say, we need to get involved in the governance of this protocol. We need to now start voting and deciding, uh, in this case, on what the collateral might be. And there's a, um, within the governance, there, there's rules, there's code in there that shows how a proposal is brought up, um, how you vote, what the vote is like. And if you go back and look at Twitter and such, you'll see people who said, I'm voting on, on I'm a maker holder and I'm voting and they're very proud of it, right? Uh, I uh, am not a, a maker holder, so I didn't vote in that. I, I own other tokens like uh, the compound governance token and I, um, I have several Nexus Mutual tokens. I can go vote on those protocols and it's really an interesting experience because I, I can go and connect my wallet and show that I'm able to vote and then I, I make my vote on whatever it is, have to understand the protocols and um, then I, I, uh, I feel like I'm part of it. I feel like I'm, I'm helping out. So how is that different? Well, I'll, I'll move on a little bit. So now what's happened is several of these protocols that were out there and the first big one was uh, compound, right? So compound is a protocol that's out there um, financed uh, by, by several uh, venture capital firms and other companies that have VC arms. So compound is this protocol that out there is essentially for lending, right? So if you remember compound that, that we've talked about in the past, I put, I contribute liquidity, I provide liquidity, right? And I get paid some sort of interest rate. People on this end are borrowing right and they pay some sort of interest rate and the code kind of decides how much this interest rate is and how much that interest rate is and does so in an algorithmic way so that these are um, uh, optimized because you want people to be borrowing money because that's the whole point because the more people borrow and pay interest the the higher this interest rate goes up you need demand from the borrowing side and you need to determine what this 
collateral is, what the collateralization rates and all that are. Now the problem was, of course, people weren't uh, borrowing enough and this interest rate rate came way down so we had to figure out a way to get people to borrow more. Well, What, do you, what can you do? You can issue a token now because Compound never had any sort of formal uh, governance token. Any, there was no Compound token. There was no way to own a piece of this. Okay, And, and what we, we found out was if you give people an incentive to borrow uh, you can actually obviously bring this interest rate up because now they have extra incentive which in turn brings this interest rate up and will get more people to provide liquidity. And so what they did was they issued the compound token and that gives me as a compound token holder the ability to participate in the governance. It gives me the ability to potentially drive what happens in this protocol. Now I'm not going to get to do it all by myself but there are certain rules in place, just like any of the other protocols, any of the other DAOs that say, here's how, you, uh, here's how you propose certain changes, here's how we vote on certain changes, and here's how they happen. Well, how is that any different than what happens in a traditional company? Because we might hear that. Because with the ideas with the compound governance token, it doesn't have value in that I'm not I'm not participating in this fee. It's not like they're collecting a fee here and I'm participating in that by virtue of the fact that I own the compound token as of yet. What it gives me is the ability to, um, to help with the, the governance of this particular protocol. Now why might that have any sort of value? Well maybe at some point we all decide we do want to participate in this fee somehow and either we're going to participate through the, the through this token like X percent is going to get distributed to us as the compound token holders or we might decide we're going to issue a you know a, a compound income or a compound uh, distribution token or something to everyone who has it at a certain point. Anyway, we can vote on all that. So how is this different from, from say, a, a company, a public company where I might own stock, and, and let's say it's a company that never has declared a dividend, never has given a dividend to its shareholders like Tesla. Tesla has never given a dividend to its shareholders, and I doubt it probably will because they're better off reinvesting that money into R&D. Why might I own shares of Tesla? I might own shares of Tesla because I think they're going to continue to do that, and I think the next person behind me is going to want to pay more for it because... I mean, they probably want to pay more because they want. They think that someone else is going to buy it for even more than they have it, uh, and that Tesla is going to keep producing uh, profits, more revenue than their costs. You know, innovating even more. Um, but you get, you technically get to participate in the governance. So let's say uh, Compound is more like kind of a banking stock. How is this different than owning, say, Chase or Bank of America stock? Well, the difference, remember, is. If I own Chase stock or, or Bank of America stock, what I'm doing is I can vote my share or vote my shares to determine the board of directors who then determines the management of the company who then runs the day-to-day -day operations. Uh, the board of directors can also decide on the dividend, the distributions. Okay, So there's a lot of steps to go through. In this case, I get to vote directly to the protocol. Okay, it's as if if I have shares of Bank of America stock and I literally get to vote on what interest rates um, are going to be paid to deposit holders. Okay, that's that's the difference here. Is if I own Bank of America, if I own Compound uh, governance tokens, I can actually we we can propose and vote on on what happens. Now we will have to you know you discuss all that and you say look we're not just going to give ourselves money just to give ourselves money. Okay, because what does that do to the value uh, of this particular protocol? Does that actually hurt the value because there are other protocols out there that aren't giving that fee? So what has happened is we've seen this explosion of all these protocols that are um, like the, uh, the balancer type and the, the Wi-Fi, the uh, Yearn Finance uh, protocols that have issued these tokens that allow me to uh, participate in the, the governance. So we, you know, there's a, a balancer token and such, and, and what happens is these might be given out to those that actually provide liquidity, right? So by virtue of the fact that I stake um, within the pool, I might get these tokens, but then, again, because it's, um, it's decentralized, 
I can take that token, that balance token that's in my wallet, and I can go trade it on Uniswap to someone else who wants to participate in the governance. Okay, so these have some value because others might want to accumulate those to participate in the governance because they say at some point I want to help drive that. I want to change the interest rates or the liquidity ratios or the pool ratios or the fees or whatever else it might be and maybe there's value in that governance. Okay, it remains to be seen what level of value there is going to be in just being able to help govern a protocol that isn't really owned by anybody or isn't really owned by any particular person. Okay, it remains to be seen. The other thing that honestly remains to be seen from the purpose of governance tokens and, and that ability is, are these securities, right? Because they, they, they're able to be traded. They obviously have some value. At some point, I can dis we can decide to pay ourselves some sort of fee by virtue of the fact that we own the token. So are they at some point going to be securities in the eyes of the, of the SEC in the US and the eyes of, of regulatory boards and regulatory bodies in other uh, countries? What, what we also think might happen in the future, and we're kind of uh, pontificating here, is um, you're going to see, that because we, you can't possibly keep up with everything that's going on from a governance perspective, whether it's governance tokens like Compound, uh, Tezos is technically a governance token, um, there are other tokens you might stake like uh, Cosmos and Algorand and, and some others, and you can't possibly, well you could, but it, it's time consuming to think about all the different um, voting you're going to have to do if you're part of other DAOs and you're part of some of these protocols, all the voting you're going to have to do and the impact it has. So potentially what there is um, in the future is a like a governance as a service where I might take my you know call it my balancer token and um, you know give someone the, the proxy ability to vote my token and this organization this might be a DAO that consolidates all this power reads through what's important and is able to vote my token and therefore they get a small bit of uh, a payment of some sort, whether it's I have to buy in, uh, they might get some bit of the of fees or whatever it might be, but there might be some fee that I pay to stake my, my governance ability to someone else so that they can go vote and they can keep track. I know that if we are staking, if I have a, a larger organization and I'm staking maybe one token or several different tokens, um, but maybe we're not the best uh, from a technical perspective, I can go to a company like Bison Trails and they have a dashboard that shows me the governance, the, the happenings uh, uh, um, among the protocol of all the different tokens that I might be staking um, within their infrastructure. So we see that as a possibility. These governance tokens, whether it's DAOs or, or some other type of protocol or whatever, are going to be really important because it, what it says is organizations, individuals, people can build some sort of protocol, some sort of application that might have some sort of good for others or might be a profitable good or whatever and are able to hand off the ability to govern that code and govern that protocol and what happens to others by virtue of the fact that those people can buy into or be rewarded with some sort of token. The synthetics team has just actually offloaded the governance of the synthetics protocol to uh, actually I believe it's three different DAOs, the, these groups that are actually going to help manage it from here on out. Um, because that's just what they said they were going to do from the beginning and they've gotten it to this point. They have this, um, th this group of, of really dedicated developers and users who really love the protocol and have shown that they're capable of taking it to positive places and not being malicious and building the right things. And so they've offloaded all that onto separate DAOs who are going to take that responsibility now. So what we see in the future potentially is this ability to govern either uh, um, profitable organizations, nonprofit organizations, charitable organizations for some period of time or, or some length of time um, based on token ownership, based on people that have bought in or based on some sort of reward that I've gotten, I can now help govern whatever that is. And because of that, we can decentralize, we can disintermediate, we can give the abil those abilities to more people. Now the problem is, 
you have too many people trying to do this, you end up not being able to move forward at all. So you have to have some dedicated people that have some interest in moving forward. And some of that interest in moving forward says they get a reward and their reward might be tokens that they can then trade on an exchange and have some level of value. So you have to have some way, we've talked about incentives a lot, you have to have some way to give incentives to people to participate in the, in the protocol, to participate in the governance and to try to make it better. Because we're on the, the kind of the beginnings of this DeFi movement of, of decentralized movements and people right now are very giving of their time. And and they look at the future and, they, and they're very excited about it and idealistic about it. At some point, money gets involved and, and people, uh, in all honesty, probably get a little bit less idealistic and more realistic and say, we're going to vote on whatever is best for us. And you have to have some way from a governance perspective to, to go, we, we need it to be for the greater good or the good of this protocol or what is the best thing here. Now, the nice part is, if I'll give this an example, those that are governing the balance, the balancer protocol go in a direction that's, that's not completely positive for everyone, well, someone else can just create a new one that, that's very similar. It's, I'm not going to say it's not that hard, but it's, it's possible, and you give the, the governance to, to those that want to provide a better system or a different system or, or what have you, and, and you can start rewarding them right away. Uh, we also have issues of like pre-mined governance tokens what what kind of problems is, has that been given the fact that sometimes you you issue uh, these governance tokens and people get all excited and the value goes up and you find out that those that founded the project have most of the tokens and, the, and it becomes very centralized now it went from being completely decentralized to extremely extremely centralized and then what do you have you essentially have a bank so that is a, a little bit about governance and these governance tokens now. Um, they're, they're essentially like the DAO tokens we talked about earlier, but they might have different rules and different protocols and, and such, but it's the ability to give some sort of incentive to those that are trying to um, move the protocol or move the token or, or, or move the, in, the institution, the organization forward uh, in a way that, that they think is best and you have to give them some sort of incentive and in this case uh, it is this token that gives them the ability to govern and therefore might have some value because of the fact that it's decentralized they can trade it on a decentralized exchange no one can really stop them so they go do that and it has whatever value the rest of us decides it has based on, on whether or not we want to buy it so I might want to buy some token because I think that I want to accumulate a bunch of the, of the governance tokens because I want to try to drive it in a certain direction that I think it should go, well then I have to determine what value it has for me when I'm buying it. So that's a little bit about governance. That's three lessons, three videos we've talked about in terms of this really important building block on decentralized finance, because remember we're trying to decentralize, disintermediate, take the power away from these centralized figures and give it to those that are actually participating. We want to open up participation. We want to open up opportunity worldwide to those that are actually contributing, to those that have the ideals and the ethos that we like. And that's a little bit about this decentralized idea of governance. Hope you enjoyed this and the other governance and the other building blocks videos. Please subscribe to the channel. Visit us on our website interaxis.io, uh, our Twitter handle at interaxis8, and we'll see you in the next video.